on Friday morning, on the last day of CND, as traditional, there was another informal dialogue with representatives of the Birth Hub organization that was organized by the Vienna NGO committee. And as you can tell by the name, it's an informal kind of talk where um, members of civil society can address questions to the representatives of WHO and I was lucky enough to be able to ask a question on behalf of Youth Rise that Ruby developed and this was addressing um, the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on global mental health, young people's mental health and its relations with substance use and we flagged that um, the experiences of peers suggest that um, services and access to services deteriorated um, during the pandemic, especially for young people who use drugs. And um, the question to WHO was how they plan to address this and how they plan to ensure that all young people, including young people who use drugs, are um, receiving adequate access to their healthcare needs. Um, and that their healthcare needs are met. Um, so what we received was pretty much a non-answer, but um, it did raise a couple of important points. And, and one of them was one that um, the representative of WHO kept coming back to, which was the need for WHO to communicate better about um, the research that they're producing, the research that their experts are putting out, um, and that was also in relation to another um, question that a youth representative was able to ask. Um, Jacob from SSDP asked the question about um, the gateway drug theory, which I guess most of you are familiar with. Um, and that question was about how WHO plans to address that that theory has been debunked and is not really adequate in itself to address uh, problems around substance use, especially problems around young people's uh, substance use, which, you know, a lot of uh, member states at the CND um, still continue to do so. Um, blame everything on the gateway drug hypothesis, um, blame everything on, on cannabis. And, you know, the representative of WHO was um, really made a point to point out that uh, um, using just one theory and one um, one set of thinking is not sufficient to address these problems and again that WHO needs to do better at communicating their stance on this because their stance on for example um, the gateway drug hypothesis is clear that they don't agree with it that it's not just you know one truth um, and similarly, their perspective is clear on needing to address the needs of young people who use drugs just as any other young person or any other person for that matter. But um, somehow the science and, and the recommendations that they communicate to member states doesn't always, um, you know, very clearly makes this point. Today I also had the very, very exciting opportunity to speak at a side event that was titled No One Left Behind, the UNODC WHO Joint Program on Drug Dependence Treatment and Care. And as you can probably tell by the title, it was organized by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, who usually make a point to invite civil society speakers to their events as well, and the spirit of collaboration, and I was lucky to be chosen as, as one of the civil society representatives speaking at this event and I had the chance to talk about issues that affect uh, young people who use drugs in particular when it comes to accessing um, adequate and affordable and age-appropriate and non-discriminatory um, healthcare services and Unfortunately, I had to tell them that young people who use drugs are still being left behind by healthcare structures, by legislations that bar us from accessing services in many cases, and as well as the sometimes very serious lack of opportunity that 
we have to even advocate for our needs. Um, so I was very, very honored to be able to deliver the statement and ask UNODC and all of the member states that attended that event to consider and uplift um, the work of, of young people and especially organizations led by young people and organizations led by young people who use drugs.